Good morning and welcome to worship. We are glad that you are joining us for worship on uh, on this uh, first Sunday after Christmas. This is the third day of Christmas, and so I think that means that all of us will be uh, expecting three French hens later today. Uh, I believe we can all agree that French hens are not quite as good as Norwegian hens, but they are much better than Swedish hens. I really don't know the difference between the different nationalities of hens, but um, we're glad that you're with us today. A couple of announcements as we begin. First of all, the end of the year is coming up, and we always know that there are some people that want to know when is that last day that you can bring in uh, and share with us uh, a gift at Minji for your end of the year tax purposes. Um, we will try to receive those all the way up to December 31st. So. Toss those in the mail first thing tomorrow. Uh, swing by the office and try to drop them off. Um, do remember that the office is closed, so you're going to have to coordinate that with a phone call this year. Um, but if that's something that you're trying to do, we will try to do our best to, uh, to receive that gift from you. Um, and lastly, because this is the last worship service of 2020, we just wanted to say a special thank you. Uh, this has been an extraordinarily uh, different year than any of us uh, had imagined or are used to in our past. And so we are so grateful uh, for all the support that this congregation uh, has given each other and uh, the church. Uh, we're so grateful for all the people that have helped make worship possible week uh, after week. So if, if you've done... Uh, um, one of those videos, if you've submitted them, we're, uh, we're saying thank you. And uh, as part of our gift to all of you, we're going to try to do this all uh, as, as pastors, uh, as a staff today. We're going to try to put this all together for you. Uh, and uh, thank you for all the help you've given us this past year. Well, my other late Christmas gift to all of you is that's going to be the only announcements I have this morning. We're going to try to keep it short. So, uh, again, thank you for everything in 2020. Um, do remind uh, yourselves to check your email later in the week for any prayer concerns that may be coming out or announcements via email. But at this time, we will continue with the call to worship. Simeon saw God's salvation in a little child, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to the people Israel. We too long to see God's salvation, healing for broken hearts, hope for broken lives, light for those in the darkness of fear. Anna saw Jesus as a baby in the temple. She recognized salvation had been born into the world. She sang the song for God's grace and peace. Our eyes can see God's salvation too, healing for broken hearts, hope for broken lives, light for those living in the darkness of fear. Lord, open our ears to hear good news of your salvation today. Open our eyes to see glimpses of your grace. Open our hearts to sing your praise. Like Simeon and Anna, we have seen God's salvation born in this world, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Sweetly singing. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, light of the world, by the birth of your Son, Jesus, at Christmas, you brought heaven to earth so that all people might receive the gift of your good news. Give us eyes to see you moving in our world and in our lives today. Then teach us to sing your song of salvation, that all people might know you and your love. All this we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading for today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 21 through 38. Hear the good news. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child of Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. There's just five days until 2021. Have you all set your New Year's resolutions yet? Last year, uh, because I had never seen any of the nine Star Wars movie and Star Wars movies, and this was apparently appalling to my friends, my family, and my fiance, my New Year's resolution was to watch all three trilogies by 2021. The thinking was nine movies in 12 months. That meant one movie a month with three gimme months, probably in the summertime when I'd rather be outside. And then, you know, the pandemic hit the states and the shelter-in-place orders in March meant that people, including myself, were consuming Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus content at an incredible pace, and I had still to start the first slash fourth Star Wars movie. My 12-month plan turned into something closer to a 12-week plan as I raced through the nine movies, mainly in October, November, and December, finishing The Rise of Skywalker just in the nick of time last week. And this may be the first New Year's resolution that I have ever successfully completed. And if you are anything like me, you might also have a heaping pile of almost entirely failed New Year's resolutions to look back on. Resolutions that represent the new and improved version of myself I thought that I could become if I just worked a little bit harder, read just a few more books, budgeted better, exercised more, ate less, you know how it goes. And yet, despite the evidence, despite my many failed attempts, we still make these resolutions year after year. Why? Well, a team of psychologists at the University of Pennsylvania was interested in this question, and they set out to answer it. And they found that right after New Year, Google searches for the word diet skyrocketed. Not surprising. What was more surprising to them is that the searches that included the word diet also saw a pretty significant increase right after birthdays, the start of a new month, and federal holidays. 
Psychologists named these moments temporal landmarks and theorized that the reason why we continue to make resolutions, even when maybe we don't always follow through on them, is that because these moments, these temporal landmarks, are periods when we are most likely to reevaluate ourselves and our lives and most capable of reimagining who we would like to be. In other words, the periods in our lives when we balance between the old and the new, a birthday, a new month, a new year, these are moments when we are, all, when we are balancing between what was and what could be, our identity-forming moments where we also are balancing between who we are, who we were, and who we could become. After all, new year, new you does sound a lot more convincing than new Tuesday, new you. Well, our passage for today comes at one of these identity-forming moments, one of these temporal landmarks. It's one of the few stories we have that accounts for the time after Jesus was born and before his adult ministry. And as the story goes, some days after Jesus was born, Joseph, Mary, and their new baby traveled to the temple in Jerusalem. This was the tradition for Jewish families after a mother had given birth. And while they were at the temple, they were approached by a man named Simeon. We don't know much about Simeon. This is the only time he shows up. But what we are told is that he is a faithful man who is waiting for the day when Israel will be consoled, saved, and redeemed. He is waiting for an end to the hardship he and his people are experiencing. We are also told that it has been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he will not die until he has seen the Messiah. We've been talking about waiting for the past four Sundays of Advent, maybe so much so that you're sick of it, but imagine what that wait must have been like, wondering when it was going to happen, and then as time ticked by, wondering if he had missed something, and then as days turned into years, maybe even fearing that he had misunderstood, waiting. And what must Simeon have been expecting? The Messiah who would console, save, and redeem Israel, who would end his people's long history of suffering. Is he expecting a king on a throne? A warrior? A soldier? And what must he have thought when he saw Jesus at the temple that day and realized that the Messiah that he had been waiting for was a baby? Was he confused? Upset? Or was it a moment of realization that God's vision was maybe far different than his own? So he takes Jesus from his parents and holds him in his arms. He declares for all to hear that Jesus was there to comfort, console, and save not only Israel, but all people. And he adds, saying, now you are dismissing your servant in peace. Meaning that now that he has seen the Messiah, he can die. In this moment of death and new life, with Simeon looking towards death and holding this baby who was just a few days old, this period between the old and the new of what was and what will be, Simeon, I think, is doing something similar to what we do each year with our resolutions. In this identity-forming moment, he is able to reevaluate who he is and capable of reimagining who he could be. Jesus came not just for Israel, but for all people. He is capable of reevaluating who the Messiah is and reimagining who the Messiah might be. These moments are rare moments of openness, moments where we become more malleable and flexible, moments where we experience new hope and have a new imagination about what is possible. I was looking back at news articles, pictures, and videos from March this year, trying to remember, really remember, what those first few days of the pandemic felt like. And in this self-assigned exploration, I came across a worship service from Sunday, March 15th. I remember watching the service in my small apartment in Chicago as the pastor, Reverend Adam Hamilton, 
ran through a litany of what our, our nation had experienced that previous week. The NCAA canceled March Madness this week, he reported. The NBA suspended its season. Major League Soccer and Hockey followed suit. Major League Baseball pushed back its spring opening. All Broadway shows canceled. They closed. They were halted. The Louvre in Paris was no longer open for people to come visit. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York closed. Major universities closed across the country. Walt Disney World closed. All of its resorts and cruise ships all in one week. Did you remember that this all happened in one week? Actually, it happened in two days, March 11th and March 12th. In the span of two days, the year 2020, our years and our lives were transformed. Some people joked, cancel 2020. Cancel 2020, meaning let's pretend 2020 never happened, like it didn't exist. Let's move on with our lives in 2021, and let's not look back. Let's get back to normal. It makes sense. That one week in March alone was more than we ever could have imagined. And it just scratched the surface of what 2020 was. Now add to that hurricanes in the South, wildfires across the West, protests that started in our own backyard and spread across the globe, lost jobs, distance learning, rearranged birthdays, weddings, funerals, canceled holiday celebrations, and do y'all remember that one week when we were really afraid about murder hornets but then forgot about it instantly because frankly, we just didn't have the energy. Canceled 2020. But then in digging up these memories from March, it occurred to me that December 25th, Christmas Day this year, was nine months, almost to the day when the first shelter-in-place order was issued in Minnesota. Which means that we've been waiting for this pandemic to end just about the same length of time that Mary held that baby in her stomach waiting to meet her new son. Maybe we're ready to close the door on 2020 and never look back. Or maybe, like Mary, this is the end of one chapter that starts an entirely new beginning. The phrase, a new normal, has become a frequent addition to our collective vocabulary. A new normal meaning not only the ways that we have adapted to living through a once-in-a-century pandemic, but also the ways that this experience has changed and will change us even after the pandemic has passed. I sometimes hear the second type of new normal uttered with a hint of hope, with the sense that in this intersection between the old and the new, that we are capable of becoming something more, something different. We are more malleable than we have ever been before. Our imagination about what's possible has been expanded. And so now, maybe now is the time to make some resolutions about who we want to be as a church, as a community, as individuals? What are the hard-earned lessons from 2020 that we want to carry into 2021? What changes have we made that are worth keeping? How have our eyes been opened anew to iniquity and injustice that we cannot unsee or forget? Who do we want to be at this landmark and all of the landmarks that are sure to come in 2021? What is this new normal that we are being called to live into? And what daring vision can we imagine for ourselves? Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please join me as we confess our faith in the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord and God, thank you for the gift of Christmas. Thank you for coming to us in the Jesus child with love and peace. Thank you for the persons through whom your love is made real to us. Thank you for the elders who are our roots and our history and who have given us the faith, traditions, and sense of belonging. Thank you for those who are dead and whose continuous presence in our lives is more intense in these days. Thank you for all the usual and unusual ways in which you have connected us with beloved and friends in this season of Christmas during a pandemic. Thank you for all the volunteers and workers who have walked the extra mile to bring a little bit of Christmas joy to people in nursing homes far away from family, to people who are alone in hospital rooms, fearful of dying without anyone who can hold their hand in the moment of having to say goodbye, to people who are confined to a prison cell. Thank you for all the people who have been working while others have been celebrating Christmas, including doctors and nurses, firefighters, and police officers. Thank you for all the people who are willing to reach out to neighbors beyond the margins of their comfort and security. We pray for all who are alone or feeling lonely in this season which affirms love and community. For all who are homeless and jobless in this season of compassion and new life. For all who live in pain of body or mind in this time when love is declared incarnate. We pray for the children of this earth, especially those who are abused or neglected. We pray for all who are victims of hate and oppression. Enable us to feel their pain and rejection. Help us to reach out in understanding and reconciliation. We pray for all the people who are sick with COVID, whether they are in the hospital or quarantining at home. We pray that the distribution and application of the vaccine may be smooth and fast. We pray for those who are mourning the death of a beloved due to COVID or any other reason. We pray for those we name in our hearts now. We pray that you will use us to be agents of hope and channels of your grace as people who have seen your salvation and your presence in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the love that was born into this world long ago be born within us this Christmas. May the grace that forgives us and makes all things new make us new this Christmas. 
May the light that brought peace into this world long ago shine brightly through us this Christmas. And may we sing the song of God's salvation that brings hope and love to the world this Christmas. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.